Hello and welcome to Darkside Scenix. In this video I'll show you the progress I've made with the Staverton section of the South Devon Railway. Something I've been working on recently is the track work, electrics and then spraying the track when it's laid. For peace of mind I picked up this track tester from Traintech just to ensure all of the soldering was okay and the power was reaching each section of track. In the last video I glued down some earth texture and here I'm just gluing down a base layer of gravel for the path which leads to the riverside walk at Staverton. When it comes to road texture, there's a fair argument which says that you shouldn't really have any texture at this scale. However, I've been experimenting with a few techniques. The first was to brush on some satin coat and then sprinkle over some Pico road texture. When it was fully dry, I gave it a coat of fresh dust enamel wash. I wasn't entirely satisfied with this, so the next step was to try some ammo asphalt texture. I decided to stipple this on to avoid the brush marks. The grit in the paint is quite large and probably too large for this scale, so afterwards I decided to sand it down. I used the same wash, but on reflection it was too light, so I followed it up with aged wash, which is slightly darker. The static grass is something I've been looking forward to for some time. I try to avoid adding too much grass and also to leave some patches as I really like the effect it gives. This is WWS North European 2mm. It's really important to give it some variety, so I'm going over the top of it with some layering spray and then some 4mm patchy grass. This is the Staverton yard board and I just need to map out where the road goes behind it. And then I can paint the other areas where the hedges and trees will go. The yard area needs to be raised slightly so I'm going to glue down a piece of cork. Some moldesine is used to fill the gap and this will be painted brown for the hedge and tree area. I've had this point rodding for some time now and although some people argue it's slightly too large for the scale, it's quite expensive so I'm going to carry on with it. This is quite a lengthy process, especially as I needed a few extra packs to fit the entire length of Staverton. When all the parts had been cut out and filed, I brushed on a metal effect paint. These were put aside to dry and then followed up with a very light coat of dark tracks. When these are glued into position on the layout I'll give them some additional weathering. If you need multiple rodding the instructions recommend that you glue them together at this point.
When attaching the rodding to the layout, I used a mixture of super glue and extra thin cement. I made two attempts to create concrete fence posts. The first was to cut the posts from balsa wood and then cover them in satin coat. While the satin coat was still wet, I sprinkled on some concrete weathering powder. Unfortunately, the results weren't very good, so for my second attempt, I cut the posts from MDF. They were given a coat of rail match concrete paint. And to create the concrete effect, I used a selection of grey washes and then flicked on the paints using a paintbrush. The Bishop's Bridge section is inaccessible unless you work on the railway. I found some driver's eye footage on YouTube which helped me to model the track area, but I couldn't find any photographs of the side of the bridge. This is me attempting to make the concrete sections under the railings from Plaster of Paris. I picked up two of these Wills kits to make the railings, but had to alter them significantly. This was my attempt at modelling the top of the bridge, so I wired in the point. The following day I received these two photos which showed I got it drastically wrong. Back to the drawing board I created the sides of the bridge plus these smaller pieces to create the arch tunnel. I glued two pieces together to create the thickness required and then glued together all the smaller pieces. The tops of the bridge sides are slightly curved, which I achieved with a light sanding. Some grey primer was brushed on and then left to dry, followed up by some watered down filler. It's brushed on initially before being stippled to remove the brush marks. After being left overnight to dry, I used three acrylic washes to create a base. I was happy with the texture, so I'll be working on it again soon to create the correct colour and weathering. The next step was to create some holes for the railings. And finally, an additional piece of the bridge to allow the railings to curve around. I've been adding lots of seafoam trees to the layout, and some people have asked me before about using glycerin to preserve the trees. I usually use some glycerin and hot water to soak twigs and seafoam trees overnight. They're usually very brittle, and very few of them are straight. If you try to straighten them out of the packet, they usually break, so if you add some glycerin, it usually makes them slightly more flexible. I saw this method on Luke Towan's channel, which means hanging a weight from the bottom and then spraying it with scenic cement. It's hard to get them perfectly straight, but it definitely makes an improvement. Once they're dry, you can spray them the colour of your choice. Following that, I add some green foliage with some layering spray, which I showed in episode 2. This is jumping ahead slightly due to my impatience, but I'm only doing sections which won't get in the way. I decided to add some Gauge Master sound modules inside the station buildings. I'll show you the simple wiring in process on screen whilst playing the sounds from the line side version.
Back to the Scenics, and this is Woodland Scenics fine leaf foliage, which I used on the Dartington section. This is going to run along each side of the leet and will be followed up with some rubberized horsehair, seafoam trees, and more seafoam bushes. While I was in the middle of the scenics, I remembered I had this spare hut, so I gave it a coat of paint and then put it in place next to where the signal box will go later on. I made the station signs some time ago, so it was nice to finally fix them into place. I also started to position the station fencing. So the next steps I'm going to make on the Staverton station board are some trees and bushes at the rear of the car park and just behind the station buildings. Hedges and fences alongside the path and behind the signal. Some neat rubberized horsehair hedges for the private residential area. Some posts, gates and fencing around the crossing gates and some more point rodding. A coat of paint on the buffet coach before I look at detailing the interior. Some trees and bushes alongside the leet. Some ivy and moss which will cover the majority of this leet wall. A carport and some scenery to help blend in with the next board. Improve the designs of the station buildings and then follow up with a resin pour for the leet. On the Staverton yard board I need to continue with adding trees and bushes to create the hedge and then follow up with a resin pour. I need to create some steps leading from the platform and a gate which leads into the yard. A hedge and some trees running along the back of the yard. Possibly some shipping containers which are used for storage. And the hedgerow will continue into the Bishop's Bridge board with the final part of the resin pour. I need to spend some time creating an accurate version of the signal box. And finally some woodland ground cover and perhaps some sheep or other farm animals in the field. I took the opportunity to put the three Staverson boards together and have a short running session to ensure everything was working properly. If you like the videos, please do like and subscribe. Your support is appreciated. Thanks for watching.